today we're going to be taking a look at the HIP Central new version, which is version 2.2, being quite a few updates to the software itself. I'm the host for today's webinar, and my name's Nathan Garner. I'm the Technical Pre-Sales and Projects Manager here at Dynamic CCTV. We're going to go through a few different slides first, just covering off some of the theory behind some of the updates and what's actually being brought into the new HIP Central version 2.2 as well. And I've just got a short video that just covers as an introduction to the Hixcentral platform, if it's something that you've never looked at before within the system. As I'm going through anything, if you have any questions, if you put them in the Q&A section, and I'll keep an eye on that as we're going through the webinar. And then when we get onto the live demo as well, if there's anything additional that you'd like to see, please put in the Q&A and I'll try and do my best to show that as well. So if we make a start, main for this one is new features that have been brought into Hick Central. Um, so with the actual software itself, these are the main kind of updates to the actual system. And so generally there's been some improvements across the board to the user interfaces uh, for the web clients and also the control client side of things as well. So for the video wall, there's been some updates to make it easier for the operators to actually manipulate the video walls and also the visit module, and which is a powerful module from the platform. But if you have a site where they have visitors and you can actually create visitor logs through access control as well as through the AMPR and it also allows for pre-booking a visitor in the system which we'll also be taking a look at in a bit more depth. The main new functionality that's been added into the Accenture update comes in the mobile vehicle management. So Hikvision have their own mobile surveillance systems which can be fitted into vehicles such as buses and lorries uh, to be able to record the video and then that's transmitted over 4G connections to be able to live view from your example platform via the control room or anything else as well. We also have the evidence management solution within Hague Central and also the body camera and dock station which we've also got set up on our system today, which we'll be able to take a look at within that as well. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at is the video monitoring application. So this is the video side of Central. The body worn camera and dock station came in um, a couple of versions ago, but it was kind of limited on what you could actually do with the system. Whereas now it's brought in all the original features that were available in the IBM S5200 platform. And this is now um, what will be used going forward as an all in one solution through the Hike Central system there. So with the body cameras, you actually have your physical body camera unit itself and that can connect back into Hick Central either via the local Wi-Fi or via 3G and 4G connections, depending on the model of the body worn unit that you actually use. That then allows for the control room that's running Hick Central to be able to live view that camera that the officer is wearing at the time. And if you use it in conjunction with a docking station, so there's two different docking stations. There's a desktop one, which has the docking units on top of the unit itself, or there's the bit more useful and bit fancier dock, which is the wall mount unit, which has little cubby holes where the dock units go in, and it uses facial recognition to actually open up those cubby holes and allow the operators to be able to remove their specific body worn camera and also return it at the end of their shift as well within that. It also gives you the ability to have alarm linkage. So on the body worn cameras themselves, there is alarm buttons for the patrolling guards, uh, whoever's wearing the actual unit itself, and that can trigger directly into the control room that's running the Hague Central platform within that as well. So the way that the evidence management side of things works is when you download footage from your 
body worn camera, you can upload it to an SFTP server using the evidence management solution that's built into Hike Central. We're going to take a look at some of the new features within the evidence management as well. It's a lot more easy to use and a lot simpler to set up within the system as well. So that makes it a lot more useful for clients and for control rooms that are needing the evidence management. And that directly ties in with the body worn solution. So when you're downloading footage from the body worn cameras, you search via person within the control client of Hicks Central. And when you're downloading that, instead of saving it to the local PC that your control client's installed on, you can then integrate the an SFTP server with the evidence management solution and have it saved to that instead of the local operator's PC. And then it can be reviewed and used later down the line. It's saved in a secure storage location that's encrypted for the system. So within the video monitoring system now, it can actually link up to 828 system events within Hike Central. You can also easily configure who actually you want to receive the alarms and using alarm receiving groups instead of individual persons. You can do it via a group and you can have up to 29 linkage actions set per event within the Hike Central system as well. You can also have alarm processing methods. So when that alarm's triggered, how that needs to be processed on the system. And you can have up to 24 of those now in the newer example update. And there's a few different ways to be able to have your alarm statistic reports back up within the system. So the Events can go through to the Hag Center, which will be a control client. They can be uploaded to an F FTP server, or they can be emailed to specific users within the system, as long as you have an SFTP server added and configured in the Xample platform within that as well. You can also personalize the system more now, so you can actually modify the panel buttons and alarm sounds dependent on what you're needing for all your operators needing for the actual system as well. So it gives you that flexibility from the solution there. So these are some of the new UIs that have been improved within Hexen, which we're going to take a look at in a bit more detail when it comes to the live demo. So the RSM is for taking Hexen kind of to the next level. So if you had for example, a business where they had multiple offices around the country and they had one central headquarters. Each of the individual offices could have their own Hike Central server. And then at the headquarters, they would have the RSM version of Hike Central. And that, what that allows you to do is do like a parent topology. So the RSM server would be your parent and then the Accent all servers at each of the individual sites would be their children and that's how that would link up to the system. So you'd have your management coming down from your RSM server at HQ and then it would flow through into the Hicksemple servers that are dotted around the country at each of the remote offices within that. So it gives you kind of a top-down full management system and it will also allow you to back up the event logs and any settings that, you've, that are done on the remote central servers up to the RSM server that's back at HQ as well within that. Then we've got the web client operations. So now within the web client of Hicksemble, instead of it going in between different menus, it has a tab style system. So when you open one of the um, menu pages within the software itself, it creates a new tab within the web client of Hick Central, similar to how your web browser works, for example. Hick Central now works in a similar sort of way, makes it easier when you're having to go between different pages to change settings within the system. So it's not going to the same page all the time, it's there in the background, so you're not having to wait for it to load within that. And then within the video wall or smart wall configuration on the control clients, They've streamlined the setup of that now within the system itself, which we can take a look at on our system as well. 
There's also a few other optimizations that have been done within the Hag Central as well. So PEZ Auto tracking, IPv6 integration now for your larger sites or your sites that specifically require the IPv6 integration instead of using the standard IPv4 IP addresses within that. Now we're going to move on to the mobile monitoring. And so this is for your vehicles side of things, so your buses, anything like that, you can actually link into Hike Central um, within the system now. So this is just an accident overview worldwide and what will actually be coming into going forward with the EU European Commission for mandatory uh, going forward in 2022. And also in the UK it comes under the BIFA, which is British International Freight Association within this as well. So this is becoming more and more important in different industries and in different scenarios within the actual system itself. So for example, school buses, uh, your operational transport, so your usual, for example, Riva buses or London buses, anything like that, that around the country. Often you'll see that there is video surveillance that are fitted to those and it's becoming a lot more widespread within that and Hit Vision have a solution which integrates the mobile solutions or the mobile recorders that will be fitted into those vehicles into the Hike Central platform for the actual system, which makes it a lot more user-friendly having a one-stop kind of VMS to be able to manage CCTV that's local on site, as well as your remote vehicles and all of your other devices that are linked to that as well. From a solution overview of the system, so for the driver, we want to remind them that to drive safe. If there's an emergency, they want to be able to have SOS call for assistance. Security, we want it to be able to monitor easily all of the vehicles that are added to the system and be able to quickly respond to any alarms that they get through. From manager's point of view, they might want to evaluate driver's performance and help see the operational overview of the different vehicles, see how many hours a driver's driving, for example, or anything um, within that kind of scope of the system. So this is the actual overview of the solution itself. So we have Hike Central at the top, and then we have our 3G and 4G connections, and they, these will then connect to our mobile recorder, one of the analysis servers, and the other mobile recorders that we've got there, as well as the dash cams as well. So for the mobile recorders, these just be for general recording on the actual bus or vehicle that it's installed in. The analysis works more as watching the driver's behavior, if they're distracted, for example, anything like that, the analysis server can actually detect that and trigger a warning to the central uh, VMS or trigger a local alarm on the bus as well within that. So for the live view side of things, so this would just be using the vehicle recorders or mobile recorders. So we've got our panic button, which is fitting next to the bus driver. And we've also got an intercom, so it can do two-way talk back to the control room if it's needed. And also a local monitor to be able to view the cameras for the back of the bus. So they have a full overview of the buses and the, uh, of the vehicle itself. Within Hike Central, we have a control panel, which would give us an overview of that vehicle. It would also give it its location on a map and where that vehicle's driven, whether or not it's in motion, whether or not it's stopped, or if there's an alarm being triggered on the vehicle itself. That will all show through as an overview within the Hike Central platform, within the map section, when that is configured for the central management. You can also set up forbidden areas. So once a vehicle intrudes a preset area, an alarm will be triggered. So if there's an area within the city or anything like that where they're not allowed to enter, a bus can automatically send a alarm to the Hague Central platform. Or if it's, for example, a van driver and a worker in a certain area, and they're not allowed within specific areas due to zoning or vehicle emissions, anything like that, it can actually trigger a warning to the control room that the vehicle has entered that area. 
We can also have permitted areas configured. So if a vehicle drives out of a permitted area that's being configured by Central, then an alarm will automatically be triggered in the system and the operator is notified that they have crossed that specific area. If a vehicle has a predefined route, if they disobeyed that route that's being configured on the system, then a deviation alarm will be triggered. So you can actually draw your routes on the central map. And if a vehicle deviates from that route, they will automatically trigger an alarm through the security or your operators that are watching the Accenture platform. So that would be good for use for vehicles that are transporting money, for example. If they go off the specific route, then triggers an alarm immediately to the control client that they've deviated from that route. Now for the actual backup side of things, for the visual backup for the vehicle monitoring, so if an emergency alarm happens or is triggered on the system, the system will automatically upload the video to the centralized storage server using the 3G and 4G connection. And this would generally be done using the IP SAN units that are available from Central. And those can actually be added directly into the High Central VNS. So all the storage is uploaded to that server. We can also have scheduled backups. So this will be when the vehicle returns to base. All the recorded footage of that day can be uploaded to the central storage system via Wi-Fi connection, which would have higher bandwidth and faster speed than your 3G and 4G connection would for the vehicle itself. You can also manually go in and remotely back up the actual video so if you log in by the control client, you can go in and remotely check the live view of the system and play back and then upload that manually to the video center using the Hike Central as well. So it's not just where it can only automatically be done, the operators can also do that through the control client as well within the system. So this is the pro product showcase for the mobile solution for the vehicle surveillance. So we've got out the indoor cameras to be fitted inside the vehicle, and then we've got the outdoor cameras as well. And there's two main MVRs, a four channel unit and an eight channel unit. And we do have different panic alarm solutions, as well as an intercom for the vehicle as well, to be able to talk back to the control room if it's needed. So now we're going to take a look at the active alarm side of things. So this will be used in the intelligent analysis server. So this will allow you to re remind drivers using a precaution alarm when the alarm is detected. And then if the alarm's triggered or detected, it goes through to the control room where an operator would then check and handle the alarm. And then the operator would then archive it and contact the manager for that. So it allows you to have a step-by-step -step process of what to do in the event of the alarm being triggered, which would help avoid potential risks and real-time warnings to allow for safer driving of the vehicles as well. And through all this, you can actually build out reports and use that going forward to be able to make improvements across the fleet within that as well. So with the precaution alarm, this is used in the intelligent analysis server for vehicles. So we'll have an exterior camera and if a vehicle is entering in the blind spot, it will actually detect that the vehicle has entered the blind spot within that there. So if we watch this vehicle come in, you can see as they're going past, we can actually see that. And if a vehicle is in the blind spot, it'll actually trigger red and trigger an alarm through the system. So it will automatically warn when a vehicle or person appears in the blind spot and help the driver to check the blind spot by the monitor. And that's automatically done um, as a kind of prevention system um, using a precautionary alarm using the blind spot detection. There is also an active alarm. So this detects whether or not a, a driver is distracted, whether they're tired, if they're driving, for example, or talking on the mobile phone. And this is used in the DBA camera, it's available as well. And this would also use 
the intelligent analysis server as well that would be fitted in the vehicle and this is for driver behavior analysis so you can see the examples there and this can trigger through to the item or vms to the operators and you can also generate reports off of this per vehicle as well there is also intelligent analysis using your front-facing cameras as well so this will actually detect for forward collision warnings, lane departure, headway monitoring and pedestrian collision warnings as well within the Hike Central platform. So similar to how some smart vehicles work where you have your collision uh, warning systems where it will send a chime um, or something similar to the system. The Hike Central Intelligent Analysis Server has this functionality as well and will actually warn the driver and also can trigger through to the control clients for the operators as well. And you can actually generate reports off this within the system and it helps drivers to keep better habits on when they're driving and just give them that reminder that it's like an extra level of safety that they're bringing in, just having that reminder there for the system. So the, these type of solution won't be released until Q2 this year and these are the different cameras as well as the actual server that would need to be used uh, for this type of solution within the system. So again with the archiving solution with the mobile recorders you can manually check and back up footage over 3G, 4G and Wi-Fi networks and then you can upload it to your evidence centre using the Hike Central platform, but not only can you upload the video, you can upload pictures, audio and other files as well. So if an operator has filled out a log form or an instant log, that can actually be uploaded through Hike Central to the Evidence Centre as well within that. From the mobile solution, you can actually have operational reports generated from the system so if there's been any driver events triggered any speeding and the total number of times that that driver's been caught speeding by the system and it will also give you the analytical data for driving distance the gps information passenger flow if you're using the vehicle people count cameras which we're going to take a look at on the next slide as well It'll also allow you to be able to have an overview of your online rates for the devices. Obviously, over 3G and 4G connection, um, you can have issues with signals if there's a blackout area or anything like that. And you can use the device offline rates to check to make sure the system is online as much as you need it to be. And you can also use it to help with maintenance. So you can actually track the driving distance of the vehicle and have a overview of when that vehicle would need its maintenance again for the regular maintenance intervals for that vehicle. So this is the vehicle people counting camera. So as you can see, as persons enter in the bus, that automatically counts them up and you can have an overview showing the number of the passengers that have got on the bus and got off the bus um, and that will help you to track the popularity of the buses anything like that within the system i don't think my audio is transmitting on this it's just a short demo how the vehicle overview works within the system but i will send out copy of this after the webinar once it completes i'll send a video out to everyone with a full webinar showing it so now we're going to take a look at the access control side of things. So firstly, it's going to be the visitor management side of it. So there's some new features that have been added in to the reservation and check-in process, as well as the visitor, the actual visit inside of it. So within the reservation, there's been an update to the email notifications that has been set up. There's also the availability for reservation and access directly, a watch list, and also the ability to print QR code to be able to check in. 
instead of having to have someone manually check in, you can actually print out a QR code when someone checks in to the system, kind of like a badge. But they use QR code with the facial recognition readers to be able to gain access to the rooms that they need or through the doors that they need. And for the visiting side of it, what you can actually do is when you add on a visitor into the system, if they are visiting an employee that's already set up onto Accentral, you can configure it so that when that person arrives on site and scans through the checkpoint, they will automatically get a notification saying that their visitor has arrived in the building for that as well. So there's two different ways for this to work. So with a receptionist and without a receptionist. So without a receptionist would be more of a automated system and with a receptionist would be where they are registering the visitors to the platform. Without receptionist, the way this would work is someone would go into the system and pre-register the visitor's information into the Hike Central VMS. The visitor would then receive an email with a QR code that they are then able to print or save on their mobile. When they attend the office, they then scan the QR code or present their face to the terminal. That would then allow them into the building and it will also then send an email to the host of that visitor via email. And they, then they can actually start the meeting as they would. With a receptionist, this would become a different process. So your visitor would arrive at the office. They would go to the reception desk. The receptionist then, then, then can help the actual visitor register all their information into the Hicks Central VMS and print out a badge. And they would then have access uh, depending on the access rights management that you've set up for the visitor group within the Hike Central platform. We've also now got in the emergency mustering. So if a fire alarm is triggered, we can then have a mustering set up within the Hike Central, which we're going to run through now. So there's an emergency mode, notification and evacuation and rescue trapped person uh, that we'll be covering off through this. So in the trigger mode, an automatic response is set up. So the preset emergency mode will automatically trigger by a linked alarm sensor. In a manual response, the guard will manually enable emergency mode. Audio can be triggered to broadcast once that's triggered through the IP speaker system. SMS notification can be sent to employees' mobile phones. That does require third-party information for the SMS messages to be sent. It will also open all the emergency exit doors and they will remain open for the evacuation as well. So if a count evacuated person swipe badge to be marked as an evacuated person as they're leaving, if there, if there isn't any person that's missing from the list, then it will value um, the trapped person list and the number is updated in real time as well. So you can see the number of people that are missing um, when the vehicle has, uh, not the vehicle, sorry, when the building has been evacuated. So it gives you that in real time. So you can see the numbers of the persons that have exited, number of people that are still trapped in the building, as well as their names as well. So now we're just going to take a look at the updates to the time and attendance solution. So the bosses manually check the attendance and pay directly with small companies, uh, with mediums, the employee checks in via access control system and the HR manage attendance rules and check reports. You can also import and export raw data into third party systems um, for a third party payment system into Hicksentral based on the attendance data. So as Hicksentral is managing the attendance side of things, it can automatically export that data to a third party payment system, such as Sage 50, for example, um, within the Hike Central solution. So you can have up to 20 predefined attendance templates that are configured within the system itself and you can preview the report formats as well within the system. 
If you're not satisfied with the templates that are already there, the admin can actually customize the report themselves to be able to edit that to meet the needs of their company within the system. Now we're just going to take a quick look at the video Incom updates. So there's been some updates to the video Incom side of Example as well, just to make some general improvements. Sam's just asked a question on the payroll side of things. Can I pull data from a third party system like TimeGate or Templar? Um, so, as long as it's based off SQL, it can bring in raw SQL data into Hexemeral, and then you can match up the fields from your SQL system to the Hexemeral VMS. Uh, you do a relation to the actual fields itself, back and send some more information over to your Sam after the webinar on how that would work within that. So for the income side of it, you now have the ability to batch configure your income systems. This makes it easier when you're dealing with a large system through the Hike Central VMS. Instead of having to configure each unit individually, you can batch apply the settings to multiple indoor stations and outdoor stations. So you're not having to individually configure each unit on the actual system itself. You can do that in batch to the system. You can also now set out a notification to go to your indoor stations from the property manager on the control client. They can send out announcements, so if there's any maintenance, bit work being done at the property, um, payment reminders, even weather updates, um, if they want to be able to do that. You can also send out invitations um, within that as well. The manager can edit batch send those out to all the different residencies as well through the Hike Central platform. And now we're just going to cover off some of the new things that Hike Vision have brought out just to make it kind of easier to be able to build up your Hike Central systems within that as well. Initially it's always been quite difficult to work out what licenses and modules that you need to use for the Hike Central platform, whereas now there's a new selection tool that's available on the Hikvision UK website, which I'll also include in the email that I sent out after this webinar as well for that. And then on the UK website, you can now actually go to an online demo of the Hike Central VMS solution, and you can also request a free trial license to the software as well, so you can have a play about with the solution itself. And those are just the promotional details, which we'll also be sending out after the webinar. So now we can move on to the live demo of the platform itself. So we'll take a look at the body worn solution. So this is the home page of the Hike Central VMS. So what we can do is the first thing we're going to take a look at is the body worn solution. So you can see I've got one of the physical body worn cameras added to the system, which you can see at the moment offline, just as the actual body worn camera itself is turned off. But if we go into the dock station tab down the left hand side there, you can see I've got a dock station added to our Hike Central system. And you can see the HDD usage is at 5% and it's currently online. Once you have your physical docking station added to your Hike Central VMS, you then need to go into the dock station configuration, which is under the video tab. We go dock station. We think we can then add in a dock station group. So this is just going to be dock station test. And then we have the ability to then select the docking station that we want to add into this group. So you can have multiple docking stations in the system itself. And we can also give it a description. So this is just going to be demo for the example. Add that in. Now to add in persons to the unit. So you can see at the top, she's given us additional information. So the 407 body ones can add up to 200 persons on firmware version V2.1.1. Older models or other models of the body worn units can only support to 40 persons being applied to them. Now the persons that you apply to them are based on your main person list of Hicks Central. 
So if we go to our main menu, go into person, and then if I search for Reese, for example, you can see if we go into him as a user at the moment and scroll down, there's an option for our doc station group. And now we need to assign him a password to be able to log in to his body worn camera. So I'm just going to set that to admin 4321. And I can also apply him to the dock station there as well. So if I save that, he will then be applied to the dock station group. Now, when I've set up with my person on Accenture itself, I've already given myself a password for the docking station so I can go in and add in myself straight away. So if I search for my name, select myself and click on add. And you can see that we're both in there and we can select and apply all and we're already applied to the actual dock itself. So that's 100% there. So we're actually applied as persons to the dock station within that. You can also link multiple docks to a specific dock station group if you need to, if there's multiple units on site within the system itself. Then if we then log into the web front end of our dock, we will see this in a bit more detail. So 200. So this is the web front end of the docking station itself. So if we go into person management, you can see there that myself and also Reese are added to the system by the Xample platform. If we go into device management, we can see that the device is there for the body worn camera as well. Those persons I use when saving footage. So on the body worn camera itself, it'll ask you to log in with your credentials. And so that password that I set up for the dock station for my person on Xenerable is what I would use to log in to the body worn camera itself. And that would link all that footage to my name using that password. And then when it comes to reviewing that footage, the operator would search by the person rather than for the full dock itself. And what I'll do is I'll just unclip the dock station within the system itself. And then on the web client of Xcentral, I'll move over, just hold the camera up. You can see the more body worn cameras offline. Then connect to the Wi Fi. This should then pull through. So there we go. You can now see my laptop there and the mess of cables that I've got for the webinar itself. So we can actually live stream the webinar to the system within the actual solution itself. So that can either be over a 4G or a 3G connection. Um, dependent on what's needed for the site itself. So if it's within a building, then they could just use the Wi-Fi connection. If it's going to be remote, security guards are going to be walking around. Maybe that we need the 3G or 4G connection to be able to do that within the system itself. At which time ISP connection plans would apply to that as well for the data that it's transmitting to the system. If we go into our attendance. So this is the time and attendance system within Hague Central itself. So this gives us an overview of the absentees and people that are late as an overview of the entire system. So on our building, we have a face recognition terminal as you come into our main entrance, which is used by members of staff to check in on the morning and to also gain access to the building itself. So you can see we've got 11 people at Rabson today. Obviously our BGM team, our external staff and in the building every day, so they are absent. And we've also had some people that are late today as well within that. 
there's different ways that you can actually set up your overtime period so you can actually have Hixcent will automatically calculate your overtime periods and this can then be linked into a automated payment system if you want the full process of your attendant solution to be automated um, you just need to link it into a third party a system for this to work if we go into our records and handling and search for my name you can see that it's got the time that I scanned in this morning, the day of the week, and which checkpoint that I actually scanned in on. So you can actually have multiple checkpoints throughout your building. If you have multiple entrances and exits, there may be more than one point that you need a person to be able to check in and out on as they enter an exit and leave the building for the day uh, within that. You can also handle records manually as well. So you can see that I was uh, on there, the actual, when the records been manually handled by myself. So you can see I've overrode the automated system twice on the time that I checked in and when, when I was on annual leave, I manually went into the system and set that within the actual attendance. If we go into attendance results, um, so this can give over a period of time and I'm going to do it for the current month. So this is all of the days that I have checked into the system. So you can see on a weekend, Saturday and Sundays, I don't have a shift scheduled, so it displays that. But on weekdays, it gives the times that I've actually scanned in. So you can see on Thursday, The first of this month, I was late into the building and it actually shows that there. If I click on my name, it gives me an overview of me as a person. And if I click on the late, I can actually handle that record. I can say whether or not it was the correct check-in, check-out time. So I can actually manually go in and edit that if it was a false result, as long as I have permission to within the system or whether or not I was actually on leave at that date and this would usually be done by an administrator to the system itself so you would have to have permissions to be able to manually handle records in the hike central vms what's also had quite a few improvements since some of the old versions of hike central is the parking management solution i know it's something that we get asked a lot of so it's something that i want to cover in this webinar today as well so if I go into our parking management, go to parking lot overview, you can see this is an overview of the park, car park that I've got set up within the Hicks Central system. So you can see it's got the name at the top and whether or not there's any vacant parking spaces. So at the moment, no one's exited and all 10 bays are full within the system, it gives us different graphical interfaces that we can then interrogate as well. If we go into our basic settings, this is where we would customize our vehicle lists and our vehicle types. So when you add in a vehicle to a vehicle list, you can select the type of vehicle that it is and you can customize those fields within this section. You can also set the parking fee mode for your car park as well. So you can actually make it into a chargeable system. So there's two working modes for this, a free and a charge mode. And you can set the currency that you want your system to work in on the platform. Plate fuzzy search is when you're searching back for your vehicle plates. So if for example, algorithms aren't always 100% accurate. So when you are searching back for vehicles, it may actually uh, recognize a zero as a Q or one as the letter L. You need to be able to, if you're, you're having a site where that is happening, you can enable the plate fuzzy search to alleviate some of that issue as well. Call recipient settings. So this is where we can select users to receive a call. Um, so this is when we're linking up to intercoms for the parking management system. 
And then we also have the ability to configure an overtime parking report. So if a vehicle overstays our predefined times, then this can generate a report that's automatically emailed from the Hike Central server to a specific user within that. If we go into parking lot management, this is where you actually set up your different parking lots. And you can see that I've already got one set up for dynamic CCTV. If I go into the settings and then go into default entrance and exit. So you can see I've got the two AMPR cameras added. So I've got an entrance AMPR configured and an exit AMPR camera configured. So you do have to use two cameras to be able to monitor one for the entrance and one for the exit, exiting of vehicles from the car park. You can then set up a varying set of different rules. So you may want it where known vehicles or staff are just able to park in the car park. The barrier automatically opens for them. What you can then have is a temporary vehicle, which would be vehicles that aren't added to any of the lists and they are automatically charged as soon as they enter the car park they will then be charged a specific rate. So if we go into edit this rule and exit parking fee and go into temporary vehicles and edit this one. So within this, this is how we can set the charge where that we want the vehicles to be charged for temporary. So you can have it where it's just free or a specific session or a given time range. And when you're using the time range system, you can actually add in multiple time ranges. So for the way this one's configured, between zero and 120 minutes or so two hours, the parking is free. From 120 minutes to 240 minutes, the parking fee would then be charged at five pound. And you could then enter another time frame for 240 minutes to, for example, 360 minutes. And that time period would be charged at £10. And you can then set up a maximum fee for any given day. And they won't overcharge the actual system itself. You can also add in a parking fee rule for registered vehicles. So if it's a staff member or someone that has a parking pass, you can say when that parking pass is, so whether or not it's a weekly parking pass that expires or monthly, the actual charge for the parking pass in the system. And we can also add in a template for the parking pass if we wanted to have our own branding or anything on as well. If we go into our vehicle and card management, so you can see we've got registered vehicles that are added into the system itself. So you can see I've got myself added into the allowed list and I can select between different lists that are available on the system. And you can also have a visitor vehicle. So if you add a visitor into Hike Central and they have a vehicle, they would then appear in this list and the visitor parking rule will then apply to them. The top up management is for your vehicles. So if I go into mine, you can see my parking pass is currently valid. If I click on renew. So my parking pass rule is for the owners and I can set up the number of passes. I want to buy for monthly passes and I can select the top of method as cash, confirm. And then I would then give the admin person that is giving me my parking pass the money for that um, within the system. And then we have the parking space overview. So you can see at the moment, total occupancy rate is 100%. So all of our parking is full within the system. We go into the toll center, we can search for a vehicle plate. We can see that I've been in the car park for one hour and 18 minutes. 
I can manually go in and apply a discount rule to that vehicle plate if I wanted to, but because I'm added to the system, I won't actually be charged on the actual system itself. And then we can generate all types of statistics and reports from our parking management that we have set up within Hike Central as well. And if I open the control client and go to our parking lot, you can see there as I've scanned in on two vehicles that are already added to the system. If I then exit these in the top right hand corner, we'll get the dwell times showing up. So if I just do that now, so you can see now that we have a one vic parking space it also shows the dwell time which the vehicle has been in for one hour and 20 minutes which you can see on the right hand side there and the second plate is added as a temporary vehicle so you can see that's had the guest rule parking rule apply to it. So that vehicle would be allowed to park for up to two hours for free. So you can see that there has been no fee um, to that vehicle within the system. And you can see at the top right hand corner now that we have two parking spaces that are vacant within the system itself, which would then allow more vehicles to enter the car park. Now, if we go into park and space monitoring, you can now see that the occupancy rate is now at 80%, so the car park is 80% full within the actual system itself. That's just a quick demo of the Hague Central VMS. Um, obviously, there is a lot to the platform itself, and we'll be putting together more overview videos um, stuff like that showing the different functionality of the different modules to give you more of a kind of an idea of what can be achieved with the system because it is a vast platform and it is growing exponentially with more and more features added in and also Hikvision are integrated in more third-party systems so it can be used as a full management solution and it's a one-stop place to be able to manage your systems, be able to play back anything that you need from the solution itself. So I hope you found that useful, kind of an update to the example VMS solution and the additional functionality that's been brought in by Hikvision to the system. If you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A section and I will start working through those now. Or alternatively, you can email us on the contact details on screen. But well, thank you for joining me today. Hopefully you found this webinar useful. And if you'd like to see more, make sure you like us on YouTube and subscribe. Uh, where we'll be uploading those to them and keep an eye out for the next webinar, um, which will be going out soon as well. So thank you, cheers.